Let's talk in private. How should Black Ops 6 have really ended? Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and today we'll try to rewrite Call of Duty Black Ops 6's ending. <laughs> Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! Time we had a chat. The Call of Duty series has been grappling with an identity crisis for a while now. I'm no longtime veteran, but as someone who enjoys shooters, I still play them. What can I say? Sometimes I just want that pew pew action. Black Ops 6 recently dropped, and if I had to sum up the campaign in three words, it's a chaotic acid trip. It's very fun, but the storyline feels scattered, new plot twists popping up every mission before rushing to an abrupt finish. Still. It outshines Modern Warfare 3 with its 4-hour campaign and the added bonus of being free on Xbox Game Pass. So, what exactly is Black Ops 6 about? The Black Ops 6 campaign is set against the backdrop of the early 90s during the collapse of the Soviet Union. In the shadows, a group called Pantheon is plotting to unleash a bioweapon of mass destruction in Washington, D.C., codenamed The Cradle, with plans to frame Saddam Hussein for the attack. The CIA manipulates events behind the scenes, while another mysterious faction is hunting you down. You play as several characters throughout the game, but mainly William Case Calderon, a silent, stoic character with a fierce reputation. Ah, uh, no wonder you're still alive, Case. Always serving up the top sirloin of bullshit. There's also Troy Marshall, a clever CIA operator mentored by Frank Woods, who was sidelined after getting his kneecaps blown out by Menendez in Panama. The team rounds out with Russian hacker Felix Newman and assassin Sivahi Dumas. And there's Russell Adler, a former CIA operative disavowed after uncovering Pantheon secrets, the same guy I betrayed for Mother Russia. Mind giving me a light? <laughs> I always love that about you. The campaign kicks off with a mission in Kuwait where Case, Marshall, and Jane Harrow track down Alawi. The group is ambushed by Adler after a fierce firefight against a paramilitary force. Tensions escalate as Livingstone grills the team, leading to the suspension of Marshall and Woods. The next few missions were like the love child between a Jason Bourne movie and a supernatural shooter. The open world missions felt like an evolution of Modern Warfare 3 style offering the freedom to approach each objective with tactical espionage. In one mission, Case and Savahi Dumas go on a stealth operation to assassinate Yannick and dismantle the Avalon crime family, whose ties with Pantheon run deep. Take the shot. After discovering Adler is being held at a CIA black site, Case poses as a journalist to secure the senator's retinal scan needed for access at the gala. Move. We manage to rescue Adler and make a daring escape back to the Rook, our home base. From there, Operation Desert Storm kicks off, with the team raiding Saddam Hussein's palace, where they uncover a sample of the biochemical weapon developed by Russian scientist Gusev. But before their arrival, Case and Helen Park destroyed the Scud launchers to delay the bombing of the palace. Then, in a pivotal moment, the game reveals that Jane Harrow, once a trusted ally within your Black Ops covert group, is actually actually the villain, a champion for Pantheon and Adler's protege. While this twist is impactful, it felt like it needed more build-up to fully resonate. After losing her parents, Jane seems to have developed a split personality, fueled by a belief that Adler was responsible for their deaths. This unresolved resentment drove her to seek revenge by planning to dismantle the CIA's hierarchy and empower Pantheon through the release of a bioweapon. Case, our protagonist, is also a compelling character yet his story feels underexplored. In the next segment, Case finds himself in a research facility clouded with hallucinogenic smoke, where he discovers that he was the primary subject in Pantheon's cradle program, marked by their logo on his wrist. While similar to Bell from Cold War, Case's story raises some unanswered questions. How does he know Harrow if he's only hearing her voice in the gas-induced hallucinations? If you know the origins of the Pantheon case, you're a CIA branch. 
unknown to even the other Black Ops divisions. And what was his life like before he joined the team? We only get brief hints in the Emergence mission where eerie mannequins and waves of zombies create true nightmare fuel. There we are. Speaking of which, fighting through four waves of zombies just to collect key cards felt unnecessarily repetitive, even for a Dying Light fan like me. However, if I were to rewrite part of the story, I'd focus on filling these gaps, adding more depth to Jane and Case's backgrounds and motivations to create a more cohesive and immersive narrative. As a subject in Pantheon's bioweapon program, what if Case was unknowingly used to assassinate Jane Harrow's parents? Wow, look at that. You're a long way from home, Case. This man is extremely dangerous. Kill him immediately. Then afterwards, someone within Pantheon manipulated Jane into believing Adler was behind their deaths. She and Case share a past, but due to his conditioning in the Cradle program, Case can neither remember nor speak of it if he does. In the following mission as usual, the team then raids a casino, where Pantheon is laundering money, hoping to retrieve information from a deposit box that could reveal Guseb's location. They manage to capture him at the airport and learn that Pantheon is working to scale up production of the bioweapon at Verkuta Prison. You can dispose of what? No! Dumas infiltrates Verkuta to lower its defenses, allowing the team to eliminate Pantheon operatives and make an attempt to capture Jane Harrow instead of the team capturing her and uncovering her backstory through brainwashing. I'd prefer a twist where Jane captures Case instead, holding him hostage in a hidden location. This setup would create an opportunity for both her full story and Case's true past to be revealed, adding a deeper layer to their connection and the unfolding conflict. Delving into Jane's mind with the serum didn't seem to enhance her significance in the story. Instead, we could have learned what led us to escape Pantheon or how the characters met us after being brainwashed. Then Jane would reveal her motive for capturing you, which would stem from a desire for revenge against you for your past actions. She plans to make you witness the devastation as civilians tear each other apart. Once the bioweapon is unleashed in DC, just when all hope seems lost, your teammates come to the rescue because no man, woman, or onion gets left behind. And instead of having Jane stab Woods, I envision a scenario where Woods and Felix monitor and direct the group from inside the Rook. The moment of Jane stabbing him felt unnecessary. Woods may be a tough onion, but he's already in a wheelchair. Let's give him a break. You just don't matter anymore. Fuck you! I'll give the order once we're airborne. Don't worry. Your suffering will be over soon. Jane escapes with the cradle, but Case intercepts her. Their intense brawl results in the pilot being shot. In a desperate move, Case uses the cradle to strike Jane, infecting them both with the toxin. Their voices and effects of the experiments overwhelm him, leading him to strangle Jane, ultimately killing her. Instead of ending on a cliffhanger, what if Case manages to escape the helicopter and go into hiding, waiting for the chance to reunite with his team? Meanwhile, Livingstone meets with the entire entire Black Ops group and acknowledges the significance of Wood's team, officially recognizing them as a covert and independent Black Ops unit funded by the CIA. Although Jane Harrow is dead, her influence within Pantheon lingers. Livingstone's words imply that there may be still moles within the CIA, leaving the group with an ongoing threat to confront. Based on the man shown at the end of the game, the real mole could be Ryan Jackson, a CIA analyst who was pivotal in uncovering the events surrounding Alex. Alex Mason and the number system. Unbeknownst to others, he had been a secret member of Pantheon for years. His interest in Mason was driven by the latter's brainwashing experience. As Pantheon aimed to harness brainwashing and chemicals to create the perfect soldier, this was the original purpose of the cradle. So what do you think of Black Ops 6's campaign or the ending? Let me know your thoughts below. Do you think you'll try this 8 to 10 hour campaign? That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, for more content like this, especially if you've played Call of Duty. Thank you for watching, and that's all.